this is Melissa Tudakis. I'm here on Breath Fresh Marketing with Austin Talenko and Meredith Bachelor. They're famous on TikTok for their choreographed couples dances and have amassed over 1 million followers on the platform. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. We're so excited to be here. We really, really are. Um, like she said, my name is Austin. I am 25 years old. I am originally from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, but have been living in New York City for the past three years. And yeah. Yeah. And my name is Meredith. I'm the other half of the duo. And I'm 23. It's crazy to say that. I just turned 23 <laughs> recently. And first time saying it out loud. <laughs> I know. It's weird. And uh, yeah, I moved to New York to pursue my career as a dancer almost exactly two years ago. I think it's two years this week. So yeah, we've been out of the city for a little bit because of the pandemic, but we're both New York City based dancers. Yeah. Nice. So Austin Meredith, welcome to the show. Can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Um, yeah. Would you like to go? Sure. Um, yeah, like I said, 23 years old, I moved to the city to pursue my dance career two years ago this week, which is literally insane to think about how it doesn't feel like it's been that long at all. But I guess this kind of crazy pandemic period has put everybody in limbo. Like time hasn't passed the same <laughs> as it usually does. What is time? I know. But yeah, I am a professional dancer. I'm one half of Cost and Mayor, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And yeah, that's me. Yeah. Um, I've been dancing since I was nine years old. Um, wow. so quite a while. <laughs> I yeah. can't do the same for myself. I was a late bloomer that started at around like 14. So I don't that. have as many years <laughs> under my belt. Um, yeah, I started when I was nine, um, all because I did not want to play t-ball anymore like my dad. Um, and I was so afraid to tell him, but when I finally got the nerve to do so, um, it all ended up working out. So here we are today, still dancing. Um, started teaching when I was 16, started really getting into the scene um, about 17, 18, and have been living, living the dream ever since. Cannot complain <laughs> one bit. Well, that's wonderful. I, uh, I love to hear stories about that. I used to dance as a kid, and I had a a time in my life where I think I was dancing around maybe 11, 12 years old until I was about 15. And then I had stopped and I had a great time. I loved it. So uh, it's really nice when I hear those kind of stories. So, uh, yeah. so how did you two meet? What a story. <laughs> um, we, we actually um, last year, oh, I guess it's 2021. So in 2019, wow, that's, crazy again We're what, into, what is into time it, so it's okay <laughs> but um in 20 at the end of 2019 we both booked actually the same job it was a dance show that happened at six flags great adventure it's a show they do for their halloween season it's actually it's huge it's amazing and they think i'm pretty sure they do it around like it's across, the majority across of all of their parks yeah. in the u.s and it's this beautiful halloween show it's like a tradition for them every year tons of people are into it it's amazing and we, yeah, we were both in that cast and that's how it really all started. Yeah, that's how it all started. However, um, that contract with Six Flags, um, I was on another contract the summer prior and that contract had like a two day, you know, overlap where I actually had missed like the first two, maybe three, I think it was I only two. I don't, I can't remember. It was he like wasn't there for the days. first couple days of our rehearsal. Yeah, it was like, like two or three days of rehearsals that I had missed. So and once the whole that, cast had moved in together yes. into one kind of, we all lived together as a cast during the kind of rehearsal process. And so we were all like shacked up in a house together, but he wasn't there yet. Right. So everyone had already known each other, had gotten a few nights, you know, to kind of, you know, have fun, talk, like kind Get of become acquainted. Other. And here I come, you know, three days late, <laughs> showing up to rehearsals late from another contract. And I, I didn't have like any keys to the house. I, you know, the only way I could get in was to just knock on the door with my suitcases and just come on in and <laughs> hopefully everybody's there to welcome me. Um, but I got there, I had knocked on the door and 
this one happened to be the one that answered <laughs> the door. It. And it was kind of early in the morning, I can't lie. Um, early for dancers, you know, when we have a long day of rehearsals, we like to sleep in the next day. Um, so the beautiful Meredith comes to the front <laughs> oh. door and she has, you know, her PJs on still. She's got this oversized tee, pink <laughs> wiener dog shorts. It was the- it was a whole nine of my <laughs> of my jammies. We joke about it all the time. How the very first like that was sight the first, he ever had of the me first was just vision that I had these pink wiener dog pajamas. <laughs> it's it's the whole thing. <laughs> but yeah, she answered the door and she was like, "Hey!" And she was just so bubbly right off the bat. And I mean. Yeah. Luckily, everybody was very, very welcoming. <laughs> nice, nice. So are you two, like, together? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure. So everyone <laughs> listening knows the uh, the story here. <laughs> yeah, I fully. Started talking about pink wiener dogs. I figured maybe you're together. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do, do either of you have professional dance experience? Yes, we actually both do. Living in... You know, like I said, I've been living in New York um, for three years. And within the first year of living there, actually, I had gone to multiple auditions, you know, lots of, you know, that extra work, like trying to get your foot in the door. But it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> um, but in New York, they also have like a lot of open calls for agencies and management and representation. And within the first year, actually, I was very fortunate enough to get signed to a talent agency. Mm. So I've been I've been with them for the past almost it's yeah, it's been three years now because I signed with them in November. So, yeah, about three years now. Yeah, we've been honestly fortunate enough to do a lot of I guess not a lot, but it feels like a lot because that contract was so long. But we've right. done a couple of different things together after we met because we have a couple of mutual mentors that we work for a lot right. and yeah nice that's awesome so what uh dance styles do you typically gravitate towards performing we're definitely well we actually have very it's it's interesting it that is, we, yeah. we we both uh have very similar backgrounds in training and they're both very similarly unique because yeah. not a lot of people these especially these days, mm -hmm. like studio dance is so popular and it's amazing. We obviously love that and support right. it 100%. But we both come from very unconventional street styles, foundations, backgrounds, and people that really, really instilled in us like very, very foundational hip hop techniques. And we, we quickly bonded over that. Yeah. And I think that's a, like a thing that we share very well in mm -hmm. doing choreography together now. Yeah. But we definitely both gravitate towards careers in commercial performance, things like hip hop, street jazz, definitely the commercial side of things yeah, because I would definitely of our say, backgrounds. Right. The the backgrounds is definitely, you know, play a huge part of that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just kind of I think both of us have really spent a lot of our, you know, younger years in training kind of, you know, taking multiple styles of, you know, jazz and you know, contemporary and tap and ballet. Like we've, we've both been through a decent amount of those classes, mm -hmm. but I think in the end, we definitely gravitate towards Back like towards the commercial. Our roots. Yeah. Cause that's just, yeah, that's it's just, just where really, we come from. It's what we know. Right. It's what we know. It's what we, you know, mostly enjoy and just, yeah. Yeah. Well, besides dance, have either one of you ever wanted to do anything else or thought maybe you'd want to do something else professionally? Um, I think, and I kind of mentioned it earlier, but I think like, since I have been dancing since I was nine, um, I've pretty much been living the dream ever mm -hmm. since, you know, I think it's funny. Like when people ask me, like, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grow up? Like, did you say dancer? And I'm like, you know, I can't remember what I, you know, like in school when they're like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like draw a picture of it, write it down. Like, I don't remember what I like drew or like wrote down, but here I am like since nine years old living the dream That's and, so funny. and dancing and, you know, just having the best time ever. It's so funny because I'm like, so the complete opposite. I, like I said, <laughs> I didn't start until I didn't start dancing until like my teenage years, like my first year of high school, I think. And it was so funny. I remember when I was, I just, I'm a very performative personality. Like I'm just, I'm very that. And I just remember when I was younger, people would ask me what I wanted to be when I grow up. And I, I 
wasn't in dance. I played soccer for 10 years. I was kind of like rough around the edges and they would be like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would say, I'm going to be a dancer. I'm going to be a professional dancer. And they'd say, you don't even dance. <laughs> and I'd say, you know, I, you're right. I she would say that as she's wearing her cleats. And I'd be like, I'm going to be a professional dancer. And they're like, you know nothing about dance. And I was like, you're right. I should get around to that. So I finally got around to it. But yeah, we, Dance has been the dream for both of us. It definitely feels like we're living the dream. We talk about it all the time. We are so grateful to like have a career in the arts. It's it's such a hard thing to come by and mm -hmm. it's not for the faint of heart, but it's so rewarding, so, so rewarding. amazing to have a career in the arts. But I think that if we if we had to pick something other than dance as our career, I probably would have gone into some sort of career in in writing or journalism. I've always really been passionate. I considered going to college for like journalism or something that could lead me to writing or being an author or something like that. But I've always had kind of like a mix of different things that I probably would go into. Um, I think the top one, and this is going to be really out there, but I would really think it would be fun to be a barber, like, you know, to cut people's hairs, hairs, cut each cut individual each hair, <laughs> but to like, <laughs> um, but I don't know. I just think that'd be like really cool. You'd be so good at to it like, too. Just to like, I think it'd be cool to like open up your own barbershop and kind of like theme it and like make it like a whole thing and just kind of like design it however you what want. What would your theme be? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's such a, I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll chew on it and get back. We'll chew on it and get back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> so uh, tell me about some of the gigs that, you took when you first moved to New York City? That's, it's so interesting to talk about that because like when you first move to the, <laughs> like to the big apple, you know, like to the big city where like, it's the heart of like musical theater and Broadway and it's just, there's it's so many people. It, it is so overwhelming. So like, I feel like in the first like year, you will literally take any job You'll do whatever you that is get. offered to you. <laughs> when, when we saw, we were reviewing these questions and we read this one, we were like, what didn't we do? Right. Like literally <laughs> what didn't we do when we first got to New York? You literally just do anything to get your foot in the door. I remember you just do, you take any, you do. it's a lot of assistant work. You assist choreographers that'll give you the time of day. You, uh, do video shoots you just you're a filler you're an extra you're for anybody who needs right. a dancer yeah. you don't get paid for the majority of the work you do just to try to get good relationships with other artists and choreographers that you admire and that you want to work with i actually remember when i first moved to the city i was actually in a five-month professional program it's an incredible program that like trains dancers for the industry so well and I, we were having our very, very final showcase, all of these like prestigious dance agents and people. And we, you prepared your whole five months for this debut in your Manhattan dance career. It's a whole big thing. It is. And it was the day of that show. And I just remember that me and this other girl who would later become my roommate and one of my best friends, we were asked by this choreographer to do this video shoot. And we were like, oh my gosh, we have to do it. Like and, when you get asked to do a video shoot, that's a very big oh, deal. Oh, you're like, oh, this is it. <laughs> and so they, um, he asked us to do that. And we realized it was the morning of that show. And we were like, we still have to do it. So we tell him, yes, we get up at like six in the morning, take the train all the way to Brooklyn, get lost in Brooklyn, learn the choreography when we get there, do the whole shoot, truck it all the way back to Manhattan, do the whole entire show. It was like the longest day of our lives, but it's just like such a perfect picture of you will grind as hard as you can to get any, right. any opportunity possible. But I think collectively we could both say that doing the Halloween show at Six Flags was probably one of the, you know, the top favorite gigs that, yeah. you know, we, that we did. It was just so fun. Like it was like a, a two week long rehearsal process. And then you went straight into shows every weekend. And it was like a, so like lots of months together. Like it was, it was amazing. But it's the, a whole process. Right. The, the beauty of it was, you know, we did shows on the weekends, but because the Six Flags was in New Jersey, we would commute back to the city during the week and we were able to, you know, like go to classes, go to other auditions and, you know, stuff like that, our other jobs too. Um, and then on the weekends, you kind of had like 
you know, your little performance, you know, performance weekends. And it was just, it was a and lot that of really fun. served as like, he did the job twice. He came back the second year and did the show again. And his second year was my first year, but, um, that was definitely both. I think a really good, like first big kid job. Like yeah. I call it a big kid job, but it was like our first real dance mm-hmm. performance contract, big kid yeah. job that we yeah. both did, definitely. which was amazing. That's awesome. Um, that beats my first Halloween show that I did. It's like, I wish mine was as fun and cool as yours. <laughs> wow. Um, you don't want to know about mine, <laughs> but, um, yeah, Six Flags is pretty cool. So, you know, I imagine they'd have like a really neat thing going for, for Halloween. I mean, they were kind of known for, for doing pretty cool stuff like that. So I can imagine that was a lot of fun. It's a huge It was quite the spectacle. Show. It's like, got like pyro, pyrotechnics, huge. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Yeah, the set it's, was so detailed. They completely painted our, basically our whole bodies. They can wow. like make the, the, characters for all of us. The it's, costumes were so elaborate and like, just like perfectly it fit is, for each person. It, the whole thing. I'm it's telling you, a it was, huge it was spectacle. Great. It's yeah. it's beautiful. Cold, yeah. cold, cold. When it got to the you know Halloween month, but it was fun. But amazing. <laughs> it was worth it. It's glamorous though. Like that's really nice, you know. And you feel like really cool, and everyone's watching you. And um, yeah, it's like the fun part about it. Oh like, yeah. You ever get like butterflies in your stomach? You get like nauseous before any of that, or no? At the beginning, definitely. At the beginning. And I think sometimes when like there were, it was so funny because like on the set, we would start like behind the set and we could like find these little like little cracks in little the set. vantage points to like look through. But like when you saw like that, every single seat, the was whole filled. arena, like was the whole filled. arena, the like, whole oh. floor in front of us, like it was just like. Oh, it's it's like it's go time. Or right? days that they told you <laughs> they came into like the little dressing room, green room where we like we did multiple shows per night and they'd come in in the middle and say the professional videographers are here right, so like make yeah. this one a good one yeah. and we'd be like oh. <laughs> be on top of it <laughs> um so what got you both posting on tiktok that was actually credited we to my to, <laughs> we yeah. gotta credit my mom with that one <laughs> because <laughs> when, right, go right. Mom, when the pandemic first kind of struck up we we left manhattan and came here to raleigh north carolina where we've been staying with my family um we came here for what we thought was going to be about two weeks we were like we'll just go wait it out for two weeks this was in um march March. 2020 by the way so so it's been a minute (laughs) yeah we packed packed, like a (laughs) tiny suitcase we're like we'll just go take a little two week staycation we'll like hang out with my family it'll be great no (laughs) <laughs> um, so we, right when we first got here, we were kind of in that stage that everybody had of realizing that it w- maybe would be longer than we thought it would. Mm-hmm. And my mom was like, well, you know, they're doing that TikTok thing now and everybody's dancing like your dancer. If you could just yeah. go with them. Absolutely. And we were like, ah, All right. I guess. No. <laughs> we could try it. We gave it a shot and we really just started doing it as a way to just keep dancing because past the time. Nope. We would, we were, we went to dancing every single day to literally, I just remember us waking up in the morning and being like, what do we do? <laughs> like there, there's literally no, nothing literally, to do. Like it's a, it's a cute vacation for like three days. And then you're like, okay, we, we legitimately have nothing to do. We have yeah. to find something. So we just started creating, we started doing what we knew and staying creative and creating dances and pieces and putting them online and it just kind of became a thing. Yeah, literally. And a brand. <laughs> yeah. So what's the one video that kind of got you into your TikTok stardom? This is such a tough question. It is because like the way that it all started out was obviously everybody knows that TikTok is known for, you know, the trends and the popular dance moves and the popular sounds. Well, we got on there and we started we started doing exactly that. Like we heard learning the dances, learning the dances hearing the music and Ooh, shuffle. You know how to do the shuffle? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. A little bit, kind of. A version. <laughs> we gave up on the popular dances kind of quickly. <laughs> yeah. So like that's how it all started. But then they kind of hit us. We were like, what are we doing? Like we are literally professional dancers and professional choreographers. 
let's take the popular sounds but create our own something that we think, to something it. Something that we think will excite people more and yeah. and be a little bit and make them kind of turn their heads and be like, oh, oh I like that. Yeah. And it's not what I'm used to seeing. And I mean that's it started it all started to happen like that. Like people started really responding well to it and we were like, okay, great. That's working. Let's keep going with that. So then that. we started putting out our own content. And I think the first video that really, I guess, got the ball rolling. I don't know if I would credit like our jump start to this video, but um, Magic in the Hamptons used to be a really popular sound on TikTok. And we created this dance to it. And that's really the first time that people not only noticed our video, because that video was one of that soared into like the millions. And it was people not only noticing it, but people learning it. And so many people did that choreography. People are and still yeah, doing that still choreography, some, which like, is crazy because yeah. it's so old. But people really, really started learning that choreography and posting it and tagging us. And that's when, I mean, it's the it's marketing at its most raw, where a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend tells a friend of a friend of a friend. And like and it, your friend is seeing them do that choreography, <laughs> but it all traces back to us and that really helped us get a start. But it's hard to pinpoint it's hard one to pinpoint. video because it's kind of like we, the way we look at it sometimes is like the week itself. Like we look at like the videos we did in like a week because we do more than one a day. So I think to narrow it down to one is just kind of. And there was no, I'm, I understand that a lot of people obviously become go viral yeah. off of one specific thing that they do, but our account really has never been like that. There was no tip of the iceberg that got like 50 million views and gave <laughs> us our start. Like they're the, the, these people from right. this video, there's yeah. no like identifiable video. That's like, Oh, they're the, those people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, like the Charlie bit my finger guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> like that's who he is. That's, that's him. Right. And so there's no really video that I think you can pin us to, but I think it's, it's because we, I mean, our choreography is, is what we do. It's yeah. what we do for our lives. It's our, it's our art and it's our craft. And we share that really, really consistently. So we're fortunate enough to, I think, get that same consistent turnout back because we're posting it and we're putting it out in a consistent way too. Mm -hmm. Well, like, let's see something. <laughs> we're winding down you know. thought it was at 9 30 <laughs> we're, we're in our comfies <laughs> um so so how did you like how do you come up with the content you know like i'm thinking if you're doing multiple tiktoks per day right i mean that that gets to be a lot i mean how do you come up with your ideas you kind of swipe through like a few hundred and you're like ah oh, let's do that something different you know, but, or do you just kind of like think of random things and say, okay, let's try it. It's actually funny that you say that we sit there and kind of like scroll because the majority of the time, sometimes we do. <laughs> like when, <laughs> when we do scroll, we tend to like, you know. But it's us looking for sounds. It's that's not what even. That's I was about to say. Yeah, yeah like we, yeah. we're scrolling actual videos and we'll like throughout time just kind of like, you know, click the sound and hit save because we'll be like, maybe we'll do that someday. But then when we sit down to like pick a sound, that's when we're like, what about this? Uh, not feeling it. What about this? Uh, maybe tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of the whole, the whole way it kind of starts is like, honestly, like, what are we feeling that yeah. day? You know? But I get, it's so hard to pin down how we actually come up with the raw <laughs> content of like the choreography, because I mean, we do crank out a very high volume of choreography and it, it's challenging yeah. it really really is sometimes we have to stop ourselves and be like we have to stop doing that step we've put that step in so many dances <laughs> recently. we really right. have to push ourselves to come up with new things but again like dance and choreography is our career so we're used to having to push the envelope like right. that we're really just taking what we were doing before and sharing it so yeah, we take inspiration from from the sounds we hear. We take inspiration from each other. I was just about to say, it all kind of, again, winds back to the way that we were brought up in our, you know, in our training. Like, we do have very similar, you know, training backgrounds. So when we, you know, we set up our phone, we set up our, our you know, our ring light, the whole, the whole nine yards. But when we, you know, we're standing there, we're ready to create, we're really good at, like, you know, kind of feeding off of each other's energy. But also, we also... We also, we also, we also, we also. <laughs> we also are really good at 
um, interpreting music the same way too. Like when we hear a certain, you know, a certain way that the song goes, we kind of say like, oh, I kind of feel like this here. And then you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, that like, that works. Like I feel like, yeah, because they're both really, like we, we listen calm, to music the listen, same way. Yeah, it, dance has, dance is literally 90% listening to music. And when you come from a really foundational hip hop background, that's, they train you to listen. They train you to hear like yeah. what you're hearing. And so when we both hear like a certain hi hat backbeat, we're both already like, like on the same that groove. wavelength of whatever groove that right. is. And so it's that really plays just, a huge part. Of it, it does. It, like once we, once we get going with something, then from there on, it's just kind of like smooth sailing. And most of the time, most of the time. <laughs> sometimes we <laughs> let's get be stuck. honest. Let's be honest. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah. think it has a lot to do with our backgrounds and we Being help each other a and lot. interpret and listen the same. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So what, what do you think helps you stand out from the other tech talk creators? It's definitely yeah, going it's, back to what we said it's about... It's definitely the original choreography, you know, kind of interpretation that we take on. Especially um, because TikTok is such a world of trends, obviously, everybody copying everybody. That's the nature yeah. of the app, and mm-hmm. that's how it how things go viral, because people want to copy it. But especially with dance, we talk about all the time how TikTok is such an enigma of it's like a literal dance app like it's based so much on these popular dances like you read you read so many articles and it's like the popular dance app you know the app that makes your dancing go viral like it's all based around like that one word dance dance. yeah Yeah, it's crazy it's so amazing it's incredible especially for us and so yeah just being able to like take on the popular sounds that everybody's using but they're they're using the popular sounds, but doing the same exact dance. So when they scroll and they, you know, they hear the sound, but they see something that's not what they're used to seeing. It catches they're their like, attention. Wait a second, I'm gonna stop and watch this. And then like I kind of Because you know, it's different than the six we right. saw before. And kind of what I touched on earlier, like we've gotten such good feedback from that. So mm-hmm. we just that's what we roll with and that's pretty much all that we know. It's just kind of creating new things all and the time. And just putting a breath of fresh air in a world of trend following yeah not that the trend following is a bad thing i think it's no, amazing that all. people are sharing not things and i think that this is a new era of nobody in ever in the world has learned as much choreography as they did in the past year right and even if it's like the woe and a collab like you're up and you're moving and the fact that people are sharing that all over the world is insane yeah I and mean, amazing being dancers like seeing all the trends it's cool to see everybody kind of do it their own way. Yeah, and it, do it it's the way really, that really they cool. would do it and kind of put their own style because honestly, that's exactly what people are doing with our choreography when we put it out. You know, they, you know, look at our stuff and they learn it and they tag us and it's like, oh, she did it a little bit different there, but like I like we how love she that. did it. Yeah, yeah, right. It's it's, it's cool. really, really cool. The trends are cool, the new stuff's cool. We we're a big fan of all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. And I think uh, the one thing you don't want to discount is something that you have that a lot of people on TikTok don't have. And that is your synergy that you have with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that comes across when you're performing together and you're just on point. Because, I mean, even right now, you finish each other's sentences. <laughs> <laughs> like, even when we started tonight on the podcast, you both said the exact same thing at the exact same time. And that carries <laughs> over when you're performing. So I think that's definitely huge because when viewers are watching on TikTok, they feel that and they know it's not just, you know, two people getting together to do some dance. It's, it goes deeper. Yeah, exactly. That's so true. Yeah. So that's, that's really nice. So, so tell us about the uh, 55 second choreo challenge. It's actually fairly new. So it's, it's it's one of our many series pitches. Yeah. (laughs) We, we love a good series. We do love a good series, but that one is fairly new to us. We we literally came up with that on the fly. I honestly think we came up with it because we were pressed for time. And, no, <laughs> and honestly. <laughs> because we were pressed for time and we needed to get something out. And I was like, what if we just did this thing where we filmed ourselves making up an entire TikTok dance? In, and I we 
originally I was like in one minute, but then I realized that we need to do an intro and tell people what we needed a five second (laughs) intro to tell people what was going on. So a 55 second video of us choreographing it so we can show people that that's how we're coming up with it. And then we'll post the result and it has to be whatever it is. And it not only is exciting for them, but it's, in the time frame that we have allotted to make this video right now. And so it became kind quite, of a thing. Right. And quite honestly, it kind of gives did, us two yeah. videos to post like right off the bat. Yeah. Too. <laughs> it's a content strategy. <laughs> Which is strategy. great. Yeah. It is, it is a content strategy. And it's cool because it lets them watch us panic, <laughs> which people love. <laughs> and flounder. <laughs> So um, in some of your videos, uh, you like to dress up in costumes. So what's been your favorite costume so far? Oh, boy. That's so tough. It is tough. I think mine, we did a whole 25 days of costume mayor for um, the Christmas season. And we had these two Christmas pantsuits that we wore. And I am just... I can't tell you how emotionally attached I am to pantsuits. Like, I think that they're just like the biggest power move you can make. (laughs) I'm obsessed with pantsuits ever since I actually, this is just just going all the way back, going all the way back (laughs) to um, the Halloween show we did. Actually, every female in that show got their own personalized dress. And then they come to me and they said, you're going to be the one, the one female. In a pantsuit. In a pantsuit. <laughs> and I said, oh, you picked the right girl. And I wore this like fierce pantsuit. It had like a fur collar on it. And I literally lived for it so much. And I was like that one girl in a pantsuit. And now pantsuits are just like <laughs> my heart and soul. So I'm going to go with the pantsuit Christmas theme. That's awesome. Okay. I love pantsuits. There's nothing like an all white pantsuit. That's what it was. That was my, yes, was. that was my costume <laughs> in the show. It was literally an all white pantsuit with like a fur gold fur gold buttons right here oh i didn't have the gold buttons i was i was <laughs> cool. like undead vibes for the gold right. buttons but it was it was a look to I say think, the least i think my favorite costume was for halloween we actually did like we love a theme we love doing themes we love but a theme. the week of halloween we did like all different like halloween you know theme songs from different halloween movies and stuff like that but a lot of people building up to Halloween were asking us, like, what are you two going to dress up as, you know, for Halloween? <laughs> and we didn't tell them because we came up with the idea, like, months ago. Oh, my ago. gosh. Not like, even months. It was, we so literally had the idea for so, so long. long. So when it finally came time to, like, unveil our Halloween costumes, we dressed up as um, Kronk and Yzma from The Emperor's New Groove, which is like... Oh, I love that movie. Oh my gosh, oh, I'm so glad you know it. It's one of our favorite yeah, movies. Because it is such an underrated Disney movie, but it is one of my all-time favorites. We both love it so much. But here's the twist. Meredith was dressed up as Kronk, <laughs> and I was dressed up as Yzma. So we completely switched the roles, and we did like a little like video... Of just like us dancing around, like being funny and like stupid. But then we also like recreated one of the scenes where she says, pull the lever, crunk. And like, <laughs> like acted oh, like you're falling. And love I, that. I love that video. Just I love because that video I too. love that movie. And we it went all so out. Fun. Like he wore a dress. She it was did a my whole, makeup. I did his makeup. Had, it was I a whole thing. I had the collar and the, the hair piece. It was, it was, it was so perfect. Fun. It was great. I love, there are so many great lines to that, that movie. And I used to say them all the time. And I remember like that part where she has like the spinach in her teeth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it like zooms all the way in. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, ew. But it's like so funny, like the way it's they so do funny. it. That is a classic. It's so funny. I love that. And I feel like I was the only person that watched that. So it's really <laughs> nice to know that you know. I know. I, know. I was worried Seriously. that you weren't going to know what we were talking about a little right. bit. Right. It always, it always brings me so much joy when somebody else knows that movie. I love that movie. I've seen it so many times and I actually own it. And, you know, I just, I think it's such a great, I, I hope my daughter gets into it. She's only three. So she's Aww. not there yet on certain Disney movies. She'll get there. She'll get there. You've got time. It's a good it's one good. to raise her on. <laughs> right. Yeah, she's just, I love that. It's like yeah. such a great story too. Oh, really yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So how many tries on average does it take you to get your video like perfect before you're ready to let it roll? Oh, well, that <laughs> it really varies. It does. It, it varies. It varies so much. 
because sometimes we can knock them out in 15 minutes and sometimes we can take like an hour. It just, it depends. It, it depends on how long the video is. It depends on how complex we what decide. What kind of crazy choreography <laughs> It depends we on how hard we decide to bang our heads against a wall. Yeah. Sometimes we, we come up with stuff and then we're literally like, why did we do that? Why did we do that? <laughs> <laughs> Why did we make that so difficult? Really? And it takes us longer. But I'd say on average, probably like 30, 45 minutes. That's, average. That's definitely Having average. some outliers <laughs> that are less and some outliers that are more. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Yeah. And I would imagine that with quarantining, you can't just like go anywhere. Like how has that impacted you? Are you just like kind of doing a lot more tic tacs tic tacs <laughs> tic tocs <laughs> at home and um or are you kind of going out in the backyard you know like what's your what's your setting are you trying to get to the local park to do something a little different because mm -hmm. i notice on tic tocs sometimes i'll see some chick like she'll get her like winter outfit on with her hat and her boots and she's out doing like the running man and all this stuff so mm -hmm. like you know how do you kind of plan that based on you know the whole everyone's on locked down and it's, it's not how it usually is where you could just go anywhere i mean typically we do just kind of like honestly we're sitting in the space right now where we typically do it uh, we're just facing that way um <laughs> but at the beginning when we first started it's funny that we would like take our like little tripod and our phone and like just walk around anywhere. like <laughs> areas around the house like does it look good here would it look good here and then we were just like you know what let's just stick to what we know because it's what we know, and it became really this well known to thing, the it's, viewers. It's strange, and it's like the and then like when it got kind of nicer and we could go outside, we would just like you know do some out in her driveway, like in front of the garage or in front of like the tree in her front yard. But people get so it's funny because we've got kind of a unique space in here. Like the ceiling sort of has these two diagonal. It like comes up. It like comes this, in like this. Then, it's like a different looking space, and so people get so used to seeing that on our feed. And so then when we go outside, everyone always comments like, new background unlocked, like <laughs> new space. And it's, like they freak out about us being in a new place, which is so different. They're like, I almost didn't recognize you, not in that slanted ceiling room. And we would always think that's really funny. But we have been able to like, not even like two minutes away from, you know, her house. There's like this really nice, like outside, like gazebo that's like painted white. Yeah. And there's, We've done some videos in there and like there's sometimes we're like, is this like a gazebo, like a gazebo feeling right. or maybe just like keep it at home? Or like, a, yeah, yeah, we, we get <laughs> around, it, but like, we what don't. What kind of vibe is it? We don't get to too many places, yeah. but fortunate enough for us. <laughs> vibe. Right. I mean, we're lucky that we can kind of, as long as we've got the space, mm. what we're doing is movement based and that's pretty much what you're looking at. Yeah. So. We just kind of do it wherever we can find the room, honestly. We make, I mean, we're we're pretty easygoing. Yeah. You know, we don't really need like a whole spectacle of a background. We're low maintenance. <laughs> yeah, so it hasn't impacted too, too heavily, yeah. but we we make do. We, we have do. a lot of fun. Nice. Well, what else do you do for fun? What other hobbies do you have other than dancing, which is like your... You're everything, but right. yeah. you do when you're not having fun dancing as a hobby. Um, right now, we are binge watching Great British Baking Show <laughs> <laughs> with, my, <laughs> with my mom, and yeah, we we dance most of the time. That like occupies a lot of our time. Even when we're not making TikTok videos, we we did a huge program in mentorship with one of our mentors from back in Manhattan, and we're always just. I mean, that's what that's our craft. That's our art. So even outside of TikTok, we're, we're still dancing Truly. a lot of the time, yeah. but yeah, we, I mean, we play cards with my family and we, I've been baking stuff recently because we've been binge watching great British baking shows. So, so naturally I've been like <laughs> so just trying, trying some new things, <laughs> but yeah, we just, at the beginning of quarantine, we bought a, we off, off of Facebook, Facebook marketplace. marketplace. 
And it, it, was, How quite old the, of it us? was quite the deal. It came with like, you know, a set of games, controllers, this like really cool like stand to like display everything. We were really, really excited about it. Yeah. Um, so we're currently playing through like all of the Lego games. Nice. So. So that's a nerdy thing that we <laughs> just exposed ourselves for. <laughs> Well, nice. Well, speaking of like binge watching and Netflix and all that, Meredith, know who you look like. Who? I wonder if I get this a lot. People tell me on TikTok that I look like people all the time. I wonder what. Um, who? I think that you look like Victoria Pedretti. Do you know who that is? Is that the girl from you? Yes. I get that. We get that we look like the couple from you all the time. I yes. watched you. And I've she never didn't, seen it. I'm, I got like, to your <laughs> When somebody said that, I was like, yeah, they're kind of right. I get that I a lot. It. I, I get that it. and Elizabeth Olsen all the time. But I, I've never watched you because it came out when I was still in Manhattan. And it's like, it I guess the story scared. about like a girl getting like stalked in Manhattan. And I was like, I can't watch it. <laughs> and I was scared. Um, yeah, you, you totally have to watch it. Yeah. You have to watch it. There's another season coming out this year at some point. I'm not sure when, because I keep checking and (laughs) coming soon. And I'm like, when? Wait, a third season? Yeah. Sorry, completely off topic, but what? I'll, maybe I'll have to get on the bandwagon since everybody says I look like her. Well, not only do you look like her, but you sound like her. Do I? Sometimes. That's crazy. Yeah, and sometimes I would say, not all the time, but sometimes like your voice, it reminds me of her voice and you look like her and it's uncanny. So Well, I will I will have to watch it. To get back into it. To... I would definitely rewatch it. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to talk me into it. I'm a little nervous because it's so relevant. I know, but... I know, but yeah, I would say um totally between the two of you, you're totally Penn and you're totally Victoria. <laughs> like really cool. Um, but yeah, I think you would like it. You, (laughs) um, so, so what else? I mean, what, you know, what don't we know about you? What's, what's something that, that you haven't, uh, revealed? Oh boy. Uh, I don't know. We're pretty open books. Honestly, we're, we're not. We're, we like to go on walks together. We're, We're basically just old. a young 80 year old <laughs> couple. We love to just we play cards. make our coffee and muffin in the morning. We, we like to retire to our cards and our baking show in the afternoon. We take long walks together. It's long walks on the beach. It's a beautiful, simple what time we, we have here in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next? What's on the agenda for future plans? We were really talking about this just the other day, but I think that neither of us expected, I mean, if you would have told us that this was going to be our reality a year ago and like, we would have told you that our, our careers would probably be in the toilet. Like the industry is all, <laughs> all but closed and it has been for almost a year now, which is heartbreaking and yeah. so, so crazy to even think about every day, but it's, it's crazy that we've really found this niche of like furthering our careers in the entertainment industry and as dancers in such a weird time. And I think that now we've, now that we've proven to ourselves that it's possible to like keep moving forward and keep creating and keep furthering our art and growing as artists, like, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. And it's just the fact that like, literally social media any kind any form of it whatever the app is social media is everywhere so just because like people always ask us like well are you like once you get back to new york like is that it like is that the end of like your tiktok and we're like no No. like (laughs) like it's just like this is just the beginning like we our account hasn't even been active for an entire year yet and we have thankfully and like been able to acquire over 1.1 million friends on TikTok that genuinely enjoy like watching our content and, that and like that is just with us. Like, so mind blowing to think about sometimes that like we did that in less than a year so no we are definitely not going to end that like once we can you know return to New York yeah we're sure. just going to we're just going to take this 
like when people say what's next, we're always just like, I mean, obviously we don't know because times are so crazy right now, but I mean, we've definitely learned that no matter how crazy times get, like that's never going to stop you creating. That's never going to stop you sharing your art. And now we've really figured out that that's possible. So we're just going to keep using our outlet to dance with people that we never would have danced right. with otherwise. Yeah. And we're so excited to keep doing that. It's, and I mean, it's, it's, such a crazy it's outlet. just, yeah. And going off of that, it's just such like a crazy thing that like what so many people think of TikTok, like it's just like this simple app for, you know, people to get on and do these dance trends. But like, it has brought us like so many amazing opportunities and have it's crazy. put us in contact with people that we've looked up to for, for so long. Years. And like now we can, like now we just like casually have a conversation with them. And like now we're on here doing this interview with you so all these other people can hear about it. And it's just it's such mind a mind blowing. blowing web of connections. And it's just given us more exposure than we ever could have ever yeah, imagined even yeah. there's this one girl that i've literally been watching on youtube since i was a child <laughs> and she literally followed us on tiktok yesterday and i all but fell out of my seat and we like sent her a message and she was just like oh my gosh like you guys are so great like it's so great to, like i can't I, I hope to meet you one day in person and we, and we were like, like ah! <laughs> like it's just we never would have probably come in contact right. with her other like other than that it's just given us such an insane amount of exposure and it's that's like the most valuable thing you could want as somebody yeah. who is like making a career out of Truly. performance arts is just exposure people are seeing your work and yeah. we're just going to keep like leaning into that outlet because it's thankfully leaning into us too right well you know what that's wonderful and and good things are on the horizon for you both because you're both humble and you know, there's there's this positive, great energy that you both share, and that you you give off that positive vibe. And the universe is going to bring wonderful things for you in the future. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Thank you so much. Of course. So, uh, your social media handles. Where can everyone find you? They're kind of funky. You might have to hang with us. It's <laughs> our, all of our handles on Instagram and TikTok are at cost. Like, how much does that cost? And then an underscore, and then the letter N. And then another underscore, and then mayor, like mayor of your town. Okay. Cost in mayor. Yeah, we will write that out for you. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, it's been a pleasure having you both on the show. I wish you both nothing but the best, and I look forward to seeing more TikToks. So please, <laughs> please awesome. keep having them come out. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, and by the way, I'm in New York, so when you decide to come back... Beautiful! Um, yeah. Perfect. Beautiful. Well, it was, we wish you all the best, seriously. Yeah, we, thank you so much for having us thank on. You so we much. have loved it so much. Thank you. All right, well, take care and, and be well. Yeah, you, you too. too. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody, to A Breath of Fresh Marketing. Have a good one.